Hello, good evening and welcome to Business here on Join East Prime with me, Beverly Broom, Government Statistician, Professor Samuel Kobnei-Nim has revealed that 90% of Ghana's gold exports go to only three countries. A breakdown of the data indicates that 48.1% export of the product goes to Switzerland, while 24.8% and 21.4% goes to South Africa and India, respectively. This, Professor Enim warns, exposes the country to high trade vulnerabilities should there be any political shocks in those countries. He made this known at the launch of the mating edition of the Ghana Statistical Services Trade Vulnerability Report based on the year 2022. Yes, more. Findings from the Ghana 2022 Trade Vulnerability Report indicates that four countries, Switzerland, China, Canada and South Africa, account for over half of all exports, while six countries, China, UK, Netherlands, USA, India and Switzerland are the source of about half of all imports. From the perspective of commodities traded, over two-thirds of all exports come from only two specific products that are gold bullion and crude petroleum oil. Imports, on the other hand, have a lot more different commodities contributing to two-thirds of all imports. Professor Kobina Enim is the government statistician. So the first commodity is gold, which is simply gold as we know, or the one that is on route or semi-manufactured, or the one that is in the powdered form. Then the second commodity is mineral fuels and oils. This is one particular classification that we single it out and do further um, analysis of where we export it to and where we import it from. So here, if you look at it, just think about our mineral fuels, our mineral oils, particularly think about since 2011 when we started our export of oil and how this classification particularly changed from then up until this time. And now asking ourselves, how, how do we get these commodities refined in wherever we take them to, to and then get them back into the country. He stated that in 2022, there was a trade deficit of 4.5 billion cities with total import of 148.6 billion cities and total export of 144.1 billion cities respectively. Only for Africa and North America, the value of exports exceed imports. In the context of trade, the kind of structural transformation that we're thinking about is where, one, you get your balance of payment right, which simply means that you always are recording trade surplus, indicating that you have more exports than your imports. And then you can only achieve that when you move from primary commodities, unprocessed commodities, to commodities that are resilient in the market and can command um, higher prices. The other part of the conversation that is completely missing is when we tend to monetize everything. And this is simply because we've not studied the data very well and threw away the fact that through negotiations based on your understanding of data, we can have very good trade relations. The Ghana 2022 Trade Vulnerability Report highlights Ghana's international trade vulnerability, which has the potential to constrain the strengthening of the economy. Now, the question is, how do we address the country's high balance deficit? Professor Charles Godfred Aka is an economist at the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research, and he's been providing us with some answers. To produce enough food, like we are talking about onions from Niger, tomatoes from Burkina, and rice imported from Asia, all of that sugar. These are things that we have capacity to produce. So if they produce them here, and that to produce also at a large scale and at a cheaper cost, because sometimes the imported things are cheaper. So if you talk poultry, imported poultry is cheaper if it's cheaper than the local one. Right. All things because people would like to look at both the quality, the taste, and also the cost. So government needs to make sure that with agricultural policy and the industrial policy, we are able to produce enough food and also transform them in terms of process them so that we can they can be cheap and they can also be of good standard that can compete with the imported ones. That needs to be done and that will deal with the import side of the of the equation. If the goods are here and then they are cheap and then the, they are also the taste and the quality is standard, nobody would like to import. What government can also do is to raise 
a little of the import tariffs to make sure that the imported goods, if they come in at all, don't ban it, but you put a high tax on them that makes them a bit more expensive so that you can give some advantage to the domestic producers. That is, is a good policy, it's a wise policy to do. That would address the import side. How would government do that? One of the, you have to look at the cost of production. The cost of production in Ghana is expensive. Cost of labor, cost of uh, credit, uh, inflation, the poor transport links between the regions and between the food producing areas and the markets and, and the urban areas, which means that government needs to invest in infrastructure to connect the rural areas to the market and to the urban areas and make sure that we have enough factories to make sure that the policy rate of the central bank comes down and the interest rates are not hanging hang, hang around 40, 30 percent. They have to come down to their single digit so that businesses can borrow and they can also borrow long term and borrow cheaply so that they can compete with the foreign goods. That has to be done. Then on the export side, because we export very little, so that again government needs to make sure that we produce enough good quality goods that can compete in other markets, can go to Asia, can go to Europe, can go to... At the moment we just export mainly raw materials and mainly gold, bauxite, manganese, raw cocoa beans and raw crude. That's not good. It doesn't create jobs. It doesn't give that competitive pricing. So when we now decide that, okay, we are going to revamp tall or we are going to allow some investment to be able to process our crude, we are going to process our gold, we are going to process the cocoa, that creates jobs for the youth that are unemployed. And that adds value to the cocoa beans and, and then you can export and get more export revenue. When you do that, then you always have a trade surplus. That means that you export more than you import. You have a lot of large, maybe say 10 billion. Some countries have about 30 billion dollars of, of trade surplus. We are now recording about 4.5 billion trade deficit. So that means that we need about 4.5 billion cities every year to be able to meet up with our export and um, import bill. That's not good enough. And then you turn up going back to the IMF to borrow 3 billion. So we need to look at trade and know how to export more so that we can get more export revenue. That cannot be done by the private sector alone. It will require government support, industrial support, to support those businesses that can go to export, like say Blue Skies, for example, is a typical example. They try to, they are doing well, try to export uh, fresh juice and, uh, and cut, uh, you know, uh, fruit. We can pick such industries, maybe 20 of them, 30 of them, 50 of them, and government can support them with all the tax incentives, all the export you know, facilitation to make sure that they have access to cheap credit, they have access to training, and they're able to export and export almost all over the world. When you have such exporters, which I'm called the strikers, the goal scorers, then you can get more export revenue as they come in. Well, away from that, managers of some hotels in parts of Dansoman in North Kaneshi in Accra were arrested by the police and the Ghana Revenue Authority for some infraction, infractions on value-added tax payments. Now, the facilities, namely Legacy Hotel, Kigali Hotel, Mascot Hotel and Silver Clouds, a wholesale supermarket, were issuing non-VAT invoice when officials of the GRA and bagged on its test purchase exercise. The managers have been arrested and are expected to appear in court. Here's more. According to the Accra Central Head of Enforcement at the GRA, Assistant Commissioner Joseph Annan, these infractions of selected issuance of invoice contradict the VAT laws, hence the operation to arrest all defaulting entities in the capital. Legacy, Kegali and Mascot Hotels had registered for the VAT invoice but were not issuing the invoice at the time of the test purchase. We went to Legacy Hotel at North Kanishi. The infraction is non-issuance of the VAT invoice. They are registered all right, but then they are not issuing the invoice. So we have picked one of the employees up, and we also took some records, because we need to examine and then establish an assessment, which we call the preemptive assessment. And what it means is that the payment must be done immediately, and that assessment is linked to the infraction that was established so that is for legacy and then kigali same offense non-issuance although registered and that is at uh, sakaman estates 
we journeyed on to Mascot Hotel, Dansoman. Exhibition. The same infraction. Non-issuance of the invoice. Assistant Commissioner Joseph Annan has confirmed an improvement in VAT collection as a result of the enforcement exercise which began last year. He noted that collection of VAT has increased by 90% year on year since 2021. There's in attribute to operations which include the electronic VAT system and other tools introduced by the GRE. You know, we made this year, we have done this growth, studied the growth pattern year on year. Last year, me the, the collection for VAT was 646. There are about million cities, Ghana cities. This year, me it has jumped up to 1.2 billion, averagely. That is by Bank of Ghana Governance report on how well the economy has done. And that is the established, you know, collection for VAT, which works up to around 92.2, uh, 94.2% percentage increase, or rather it's 92.4 percentage increase in the growth of VAT. That is if you have to do year on year. Mr. Anand further sounded a note of caution to other businesses in the various regions that Accra is just the starting point and very soon the operation team will be in other regions. Eben Sabote's report for Joy Business. Now, Republic Bank Ghana PLC is projecting an increase in its total assets by the close of the year. The bank says it is expecting to cross a 7 billion cities mark in December. Managing Director for the bank, Benjamin Joboku, explained that his outfit is working to increase the assets base through the expansion of its mortgage portfolio and explore other avenues to cushion the operations of the bank. He spoke to Joy Business. We continue to drive our strategy to make sure that my people are fully engaged, which are my staff, they are fully engaged. Those that are needed to be trained, they will be trained so that they can deliver on our strategies. That is one. Two, we'll continue to look at our mortgage business as well. And then three, we'll look at our business that we have for the corporate, as I said earlier on, the energy, the agri-business, the education, and then and the SME will focus on that. And then we'll also focus on generating more liabilities to enable us grow the books that we... At the end of the year, I think we should be hitting a total asset of about $7 billion. Currently, we are about 6.2 billion, and by December, check, we will cross 7 billion Ghana cities. Now, some five managers and supervisors that were picked up by the Data Protection Commission will be made to face the law. According to the commission, the matter has been transferred to the Attorney General's office after they were arrested Monday afternoon, and prosecution is expected. To begin soon. Meanwhile, the Data Protection Commission says it has engaged all defaulting companies about the need to register and be licensed with the Commission before undertaking the exercise to prosecute them. Channels through yourselves, the media partnership, newspapers, seminars, webinars, roadshows, workshops throughout uh, the period between 2018 and now we've uh, taking practical uh, steps to reach out to data controllers, cooperate with them, engage them, write letters, explaining their duties and responsibilities to them. Whenever a defaulter comes on our radar, we take steps to uh, explain to them. Again, we have offered training courses, certifications to put professionals in the Ghana ecosystems. As of today, we've trained almost a thousand professionals and we've placed them in key uh, public sector institutions and in some private sector a large private sector institution to help them build and implement their internal privacy programs. There's a framework by which you can uh, ensure that you are being accountable to us, the public. We teach them, we give them the tools, and we support them to do that. So uh, recently we put out a public notice and before the public notice we had notified uh, uh, about 250 non-complying data controllers by letter quoting the section 56 of our act saying that if you are a person who, has, who is supposed to comply, you have failed to do it, you are breaching uh, the act, you are failing and uh, non-complying with the law. 
We turn our attention to agriculture now and the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization has reiterated its commitment to strengthening partnership with Ghana to promoting agriculture, entrepreneurship, gender inclusion among others. Speaking at a donation event of books to the University of Ghana and the University for Development Studies, Deputy Regional Representative Yasmi Yadi said providing the youth with basic necessities in the agri sector will help create interest and save a sector grappling with the older generation. The Food and Agriculture Organization has donated about 8,000 publications to students pursuing agriculture and related courses at the University of Ghana and the University for Development Studies. Deputy Regional Representative for FAO, Yasmi Yeri, explained the importance of equipping the youth in transforming the agri sector. These publications serve as a testament to FAO's commitment to fostering learning, knowledge sharing, and collaboration across the African continent. These academic resources span wide spectrums. As you go and dive into this publication, you will find publications about agriculture, agribusiness, climate change, gender, biodiversity, entrepreneurship, and many more. Within these pages lie the potential to empower students and researchers to ignite innovation and progress, to strengthen partnership in the very areas where FAO operates. The Dean of the School of Agriculture at the University of Ghana, Dr. Irene Ejri, lauded the FAO for the support and disclosed the initiatives her outfit is undertaking to prepare graduates for the job market. So we brought students of agriculture, engineering, agriculture sciences like soil science, crop science, agriculture economics, agricultural extension, family and consumer sciences. Agriculture is broad. We brought all these students together with their faculty and heads of department in the School of Agriculture where I'm the dean and they did the donation and also exposed us to what they do. We, we, fortunately in the School of Agriculture everybody studies entrepreneurship but in the last five years we have come to understand that entrepreneurship is just organizing and so our main curriculum as entrepreneurship as a study and we now have co-curricular activities that allows the students to start ideating and starting up so we have a number of student startups that we are encouraging and so when you come to the University of Ghana we have what we call maker spaces the university has a big land over 200 hectares you can go there and decide to be a farm business innovator entrepreneur we do some more stories now and Executive Director of Springboard Roadshow Foundation, Comfort Okran, is calling for more support for young people to develop new skills and gain valuable insights in industries. According to her, this is necessary to aid in bridging the gap between academia and industry. She spoke to Joy Business at the opening ceremony of the 2023 Teenpreneurship in Mentoring Career Guidance and Personal Development Bootcamp for teenagers. Teenpreneurship aims to empower and equip teenagers with essential skills and knowledge in coding, and robotics, technology, fashion and agribusiness. Comfort Okran maintained that these young ones should be supported through interactive sessions, workshops and hand-on activities. So they come out and they are able to look for people who they can also bring up. So it's not just me getting, but it's a cooperative world that we create this program. The Ghana Growth Program is a program that we are inspiring or encouraging young people to find opportunities in ATVET and Agri, the entire value chain. So if we have the robotics people here, it's because we want to show them that yes, you can you can look at how you can incorporate robotics in your in your in your farm work. Some of the students shared their experience with joy business. I like the ability to express yourself through designs and through many different artworks and other stuff. I also like the ability to make other people feel 
better about themselves through what you design and what you show. Personalized branding, how to come out and stand out among people. They thought us that when we come out bold, we'll be able to personalize ourselves and then come out special. Teenpreneurship has been in existence for over 10 years and seek to cushion young ones in their quest to achieve excellence. Now, governments and other financial authorities have been admonished to dedicate a tertiary financial literacy course to furnish the youth with fiscal knowledge and skills. Experts at a financial prosperity summit in Kumase bemoaned Ghana's 32% scoring in global financial literacy survey, which falls among countries with lowest financial literacy rates. That explains a large section of the population lacks fundamental financial skills like budgeting, investing, managing debt and revenue. Clinton Yeboah has more in this report. Individuals who have little knowledge of financial management are susceptible to making ill-informed decisions that can implicate their financial stability. About 80% of Ghanaians are financially uneducated, according to the National Strategy for Financial Literacy Education and Consumer Protection. With the global economy evolving, financial knowledge has been acknowledged as necessary for personal economic growth. Managing Director of EDC Investment Limited, Paul Kofi Manti, speaking at the Financial Prosperity Summit 2023, advocated for the inclusion of financial literacy as a mandatory course in universities. And we think that it's a very good program because the issue of money is not taught in school. So a lot of people go through school, they are highly educated, but they are financially illiterate. It's my strong recommendation that we implement it across our universities. Anybody who goes through a university education must have some financial literacy. So it must be a compulsory course that anybody who goes through a university must go through. So you learn the basic things about money management because money is everybody's business. It doesn't matter whether you, you are training to become a medical doctor or an architect or an engineer or whatever. Money is everybody's business and everybody needs to make money and it's my strong recommendation that we think about implementing this across our universities the summit was on the theme building our financial future by the student representative council in collaboration with the accounting student association of the Akenten apia menka university of skills training and entrepreneurial development the event assembled financial experts to equip students with financial management tricks to succeed in an increasingly complex financial world. A mastered SRC president, Stephen Sikawiafi, explained the summit will bridge the financial knowledge gap among students. There are so many ways to generate income or money and um, sometimes we are limited in our dispensation. Most of the youth are limited. There are some some other stuff some of us needed to know five years back of which because we were limited we didn't get opportunity to some of this information but as it stands now personally i have benefited from this particular program because the information i needed to know last five years or ten years i am i have gotten to know it now Financial expert Dr. Ivan Zudia also indicated that Ghana needs more businesses to thrive. We need to create an enabling uh, condition in our country and that is the best way that we should go. We need to because Ghana has become a destination of choice for investors. So many investors in West Africa, they prefer Ghana. So what I think we should do is to create more enabling environment. Policies like 1D1F, they should enhance it, they should open it up and make sure that so so many industries are benefiting from it so that once productivity is up we'll be able to help with our gdp we'll be able to help with creation of employment reporting for joy news clinton Yeboa. and that's how we end business tonight for more business news you can log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business i'm beverly broom i leave you with news making headlines on the international front.